Hello and welcome to the second Porous Media Tea Time Talks. Uh, with these seminars, we want to give junior researchers working on porous media the chance to present their work to the scientific community around the world. This is meant to be complementary to the geoscience and geoenergy webinars, which you can find in our featured channels. My name is Tom Bultres from Ghent University, and I'm here today with my co-organizers, Maya Rucker from Imperial College, Kamal Singh, from Harriet Watt University, Mohamed Noura from Oslo University, and in spirit as well by Marcel Moura from Oslo University, who unfortunately cannot join us due to the time difference. We do vary the time of the talks to accommodate speakers in different time zones across the world. And with that, I'd like to hand over to Kamal and Maya, who will be chairing today's session. So I think you haven't heard me. So yeah, thank you very much, Tom. <laughs> yeah, I will immediately start now with the first speaker. It's a pleasure to introduce you to Chen Hao Sun. He is a PhD candidate at the University of New South Wales, Australia, and he studies fluid dynamics and prose media, which includes the characterization of wettability and its relation to multiphase flow phenomena, which he is going to talk uh, about today. Okay, uh, thank you, Maya. Uh, I, I would like to firstly thank the Post Media and TTAM Talks team to give me this opportunity to introduce my research in this webinar, uh, which is characterization of vetability using topology and integral geometry in post medium. Okay, so as we know, the vetability of the solid surface is a key property and uh, has attracted both scientific interest in nature and technological process. This interest is uh, motivated by many applications in engineering system, such as hydrocarbon recovery in subsurface rocks, fluid transportation during energy or carbon storage process, or the high level radioactive waste storage in geological systems. So to this end, recently there's a community forming around the vetability categorization by mainly focusing on the angle measurement in post medium with uh, advanced in the micro CT uh, imaging technology. So we recently developed a methodology to categorize the vetability in post medium by using the principles of topology this uh, collaboration with Stephen Burke in Shell, uh, James McCullough at Virginia Tech, and Anna Henry at ANU. 
So due to the time limit, I will mainly focus on the, these three key points that this community may be the most interested in. The first point is the surface homogeneity, which is common in the porous median and subsurface rocks. One factor uh, complicating the understanding of wetting phenomena in these complex systems is the effects of counter angle hysteresis due to the surface roughness and chemical homogeneity. Uh, you can see these two image, SEM images. Um, so the traditional concept of counter angle, which is a purely geometrical measure related to the curvature, uh, is often used for categorizing the backing state of multi-phase system. Uh, it can be determined from the Young's equation uh, by applying the equilibrium thermodynamics, but it's well established that the counter angle uh, hysteresis lead to the apparent counter angle differ from the intrinsic counter angle given by the Young's equation. So the microscopic counter angle measured by the direct local method at each surface contact point can vary um, from point to point along the contact line. Uh, these effects together with the errors due to the image resolution and segmentation uh, could produce a wide distribution of observed advancing and receding contact angles. So it's very important to capture these effects of uh, the of the microscopic counter angle is limited because it only measures the counter angle hysteresis and provides the phenological information for the technological applications. So we don't know whether the counter angle is still a representative measure in the complex system with significant homogeneity. To close this gap, um, here I will introduce a methodology to evaluate the vetability by imaging the total topology of flow cluster in the system based on the micro city imaging technology. Uh, um, we use the gauss bonnet theorem uh, to establish a direct link between the curvature and the counter angle based on the newly defined term, the deficit curvature. Since we believe that the topology of the fluid interface is the most intuitive way to represent the uh, bending behavior of the solid surface or the macroscopic variability in a more rigorous world. For a multi-phase system, the gauss bonding theorem can relate the total curvature of a fluid interface to its topology uh, as measured by the Euler characteristic. The deficit curvature is defined as the summation of the geodesic curvature along the contact line. Uh, it corresponds to a total angle of change along the contact line based on the contribution to the total curvature of the fluid interface as a result of uh, its topology uh, due to the wetting behavior of the solid surface. To make the connection between the deficit curvature and the contact angle, we normalize the deficit curvature by the number of contact line loop to, uh, and uh, we can uh, obtain the macroscopic contact angle for the entire fluid droplet. Um, for more detail, you can refer to our recent published paper in Jeff's published letters. To demonstrate how this method can capture the effect uh, of the surface homogeneity, we use a simple system, uh, which is a sensor drop on the rough solid surface uh, to provide a proof of concept. We compare the uh, average of advancing and receding contact angles in raft capillary tube for different intrinsic contact angle from the work of Moro to the theoretical results of microscope, microscopic contact angle uh, I just mentioned. So 
this figure shows the strong agreement uh, between the macroscopic content angle, uh, which is uh, this red line, and uh, the average of advancing and receding content angle for both experimental data, so which is uh, this black dot, and the history model, which is a uh, gray dot line. So it can be uh, conclude that the macroscopic content angle uh, accounts for this uh, macroscopic content angle variations, which is a content angle hysteresis. Um, a lot of people may ask, so this method can take the average effect of content angle hysteresis caused by the surface homogeneity. Uh, is there any other advantage? Uh, I would say yes. Uh, so we can perform an analysis to test um, the image resolution effect by taking this flow cluster as an example. Uh, we downsample the image of the droplet by halving the resolution twice. Uh, it's uh, intuitive in this figure how the downsampling impacts the droplet interfacial curvature and the shape of contact line. Uh, it also has a great impact on the microscopic contact angle values. Uh, but for the macroscopic contact angle derived from the deficit curvature, there remains a basis to obtain the deficit curvature as long as the topological structure of fluid interface and the number of contact line loop is captured. So um, the deficit curvature is less sensitive to the resolution effects uh, which is particularly attractive as a way to uh, capture the availability on the raw surfaces and tetrarchs where sub-resolution homogeneity and the limitation of image resolution present. Another advantage this community may be interested in is that the, this method can provide a single value of contact angle or a universal metric to represent the vacuum state of the book system. It's beneficial to be used uh, at the input for direct numerical simulation for multiphase flow. Uh, for this analysis, uh, we can sum up uh, the total deficit curvatures for all contact land loops to obtain the total deficit curvature for the system. We can also obtain the total number of contact land loops for the system. So by applying the may divide uh, a single um, angle, a uh, macroscopic kind of angle, uh, to describe the writing state for the book system can be achieved. Okay, so to conclude, um, I have introduced a new uh, variability characterization method, uh, which is uh, depth of curvature. Uh, we, I have a talk about the this method can account for the average effect of surface homogeneity, and it also lets us take to the resolution effect. Um, it also can be a universal metric to uh, describe the better state of the book system. Okay, so this is, that's all. Um, any questions? Thank you, Chanao, for, for this great presentation. Uh, in the meantime, people are typing in. Please type in your questions if you have any. Uh, I would like to ask a quick question. Uh, have you tried uh, uh, it on any sort of data which is available, for example, for mixed vector cases? Uh, no, well, I think it's, uh, it's absolutely important for mixed vector system. Uh, this is what I have done for now, and we and uh, now um, I'm currently working on analyzing uh, mixed white uh, sandstone and to see how this uh, impact on the mixed white sand uh, systems. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Thank you. Now yeah. um, we have one question coming in.
Just be me. Give me one second. Okay. May I ask a question? Absolutely. Yeah. Please go ahead. Um, Chenhao, so you mentioned that, that the method you um, use is not so sensitive to resolution. Are there any other aspects in terms of the experimental setup which you need to consider um, for this type of analysis? Where, where are the limitations? What well, is the quality which you need? Sorry, you mean the image resolution? Uh, oh, sorry, what's your question again? My um, when you con conduct the measurement, um, what is it what we need to look out for to make sure that the quality is sufficient for the measure to be taken properly, to be accurate? Sorry, the signal is not... I cannot hear exactly what, what you are asking. Yeah. yeah. What do you need to look out for during the experimental measurement to make sure that the quality is sufficient for the measure to be taken? Oh, yes, so actually uh, for this question, I, I actually haven't, you know, um, taken this, uh, uh, we haven't tested this, because we actually don't know uh, how this, uh, you know, this can be done, this, yeah. So probably need to consider this in the future, yeah. Okay, so uh, we have a question from Aryan. Uh, he says, thank you for a very nice talk. How would you distinguish a system where some of the surfaces are water wet and some surfaces are oil wet? For example, would it be possible to calculate more than one angle? It goes along with the same uh, similar question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think um, for more than one angle, you mean the actually it's another question for mixed wet system, right? Because yeah. our method is, uh, I think, it's independent. So we take the whole. Um, I think it's uh, independent though, you know, the water wet, or oil wet, or mixed wet. Uh, we only take account for the the total fluid interface as a uh, as a whole, and we only measure the 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 geometry of the fluid interface. So no matter, uh, say, they here is uh, oil wet, or here is uh, um, uh, water wet, and it doesn't matter. So we only, you know, for one cluster, we measure uh, Mach Swabe counter angle. And for another uh, fluid cluster, we measure the Mach Swabe counter angle for that uh, cluster. And you, for the total system, we can sum up all the deficit curvature to determine the bulk of any state for the whole system. So I think. I think this is, uh, yeah. So sure. I think, yeah. Sure. Uh, we have another question uh, from Abdul Rahman. Uh, he asks, how would you make sure the segmentation is correct? Ah, that's, um, that's uh, <laughs> um, I think that depends on the cost we use a visual to or some other technique to do the segmentation process. I think um, because uh, this is another, uh, maybe uh, it's uh, independent from my, you know, my work. So I think, sure, sure. yeah, yeah. So I think with the, with the new techniques, for example, machine learning techniques are getting uh, really yeah, popular. yeah, yes, and, and we can improve the segmentation. Yeah, now because um, in our research group. Uh, there's uh, we we are now carrying out uh, machine learning process to do the segmentation for the rock types and to account for several minerals in the rock. So I think it's pretty much uh, good. Yeah. For, 
Yeah, I think there are some recent nice papers on machine learning, uh, comparing machine learning with other algorithm for segmentation. Yeah. And they prove it. It's really, really good. comparing not only the uh, qualitatively for images, but also with different parameters. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't see any of the questions. So I would like to thank you again, Chenna, for your uh, for your time and for this great presentation. And we wish you good luck for your future work. Thank you. Yes. So we will now move on to our second talk of the session by Shabina Ashraf. Uh, Shabina has recently completed her PhD in chemical engineering from IIT Delhi. She works on multi-phase flow in porous media, interfacial phenomena, and data science. Uh, today, she's going to talk about spontaneous intubation in late porous media. Thank you, Shabina, for joining us today. And floor is yours. Okay. Uh, thank you, Kamaljit, for introducing me. Uh, I'm Shabina, and thank you, Porous Media Tea Time Talks, for uh, making me a part of this series. So today, I'm going to speak on spontaneous inhibition anomalies in stratified layers. So this is the theme of the presentation. So I would like to present my work describing the capillary impregnation in layered porous media. So. Initially, I would like to start off with homogeneous porous systems. In homogeneous porous systems, so these are three homogeneous porous systems, and when a wetting fluid is placed, the imbibition capillary invasion begins, and it is well known that the larger pores will have a fluid front that travels faster as compared to the other smaller pore systems. And in addition, it also follows diffusive dynamics where uh, the square of impregnation length is proportional to the grain size diameter and also the time. So this is a length versus time plot of the impregnation phenomena. We see that the large pores have the leading front. And so this is a log-log plot of the dimensionless distance versus time representing the same. Uh, so therefore, for a homogeneous porous media, the larger pores will have a fluid front that travels faster. Uh, but the real porous systems that we encounter, uh, like in oil reservoirs or soil horizons, they are made up of several layers. So, and mostly they are not homogeneous. So, in such cases, these strata have different properties, different pore sizes, different capillary pressures and permeabilities. Uh, in such cases, are the diffusive dynamics still applicable, uh, which are applicable for homogeneous porous systems? Uh, and in those cases, also the fluid front in the large pores will still lead. To investigate this, uh, we constructed a layered porous medium. So the S indicates a porous layer, which has small pores. L indicates large pores layer. So we have conducted two experiments. And in both of these experiments, we found that the small pores are always having the leading front. So this is contrary to the observation in homogeneous porous systems. But why does this happen? They don't even follow diffusive dynamics. Why such uh, contrary behavior is observed? To understand this, we went ahead and performed some volume of fluid simulations in ANSYS fluent. And these gave us some really good insights as to why such a phenomena occurs. So uh, two of the inferences from the simulations that proved out to be very important are, one is when both the layers are occupied with the same fluid, the pressure drop is the same. So here we can see that the pressure drop is same when both the layers are occupied with the red fluid or both the layers are occupied with the blue fluid. And another inference is that we have observed some fluid transfer between the layers. And this mostly occurs only uh, at the menisci location. So these are the streamlines from the simulations. And so now we have uh, two inferences of the pressure, uh, the same pressure drop when they're occupied with the same fluid and the fluid transfer at the front locations. So by incorporating this into Darcy's law, we have developed a one dimension model. Now we would want it, we wanted to see if the one dimension model necessarily mimics the experimentally observed phenomenon. And yes, for both the cases, our one dimension uh, model was able to uh, mimic the experimental observations. So this blue line and blue markers in both the cases, um, which are for the small pores, they are leading. So uh, in a two-layered porous medium, the small pores will always have the leading trend. So, but the actual porous media that we see are multi-layered. And with multi layers, there will be complexities that arise. So, therefore, we went ahead to find what happens in a three layered porous medium. In a three layered porous medium, all these three layers can be arranged uh, in three different ways. 
so this is case one where the small pores are in the middle layer and this is case two where the medium pores will be the middle layer and this is case three where the large pores constitute the middle layer and for each of these three cases by using the inferences from the volume of fluid simulations we made three one dimension models for each of these cases separately so we wanted we also wanted to see what happens when we perform experiments on layered porous medium so this is the case one we see that uh, the small uh, pores layer has the leading front so again blue line and blue markers are leading here and so for the next case here also the small pores are having the leading front same just like the two layered porous media and for the third case we found that the medium pores are having the leading layer leading front so it's not the small pores it's not like the two layered porous media it is uh, different from what we have observed for both these cases uh, why is such an anomaly occurring i mean is this anomaly even possible and if it is possible what is causing this and can we develop a one dimension model that would be able to predict it so we developed a one dimension model and to our surprise the one dimension model was very accurately mimicking the imbibition dynamics for this arrangement and then we wanted to understand why even such an anomaly is possible so if we go back to the inferences from the volume of fluid simulations we find that for this particular case the third case the medium layer and the small layer are separated by the large layer in between so the fluid in the medium and the small pores layer is not continuous uh, which is which for arrangement 1 and 2 we see that they are continuous and the pressure drop is the same so we went further ahead and using the one dimension model uh, we have described the grain sizes of the layers during which such an anomaly is possible and we also found the necessary conditions when small and medium pores will have a fluid front that travels with the same velocity so more details on this could be got from this publication so all in all what we have is that small pores will not always have the leading front for a layered porous medium and the leading front will depend on the arrangement of the layers and also on the contrast in the layer properties so okay this is for a three layered system but the usual systems that we encounter again are multi layer and then every time the arrangement changes we need to formulate the governing equations again and for every single arrangement there are several uh, uh, possible fluid front locations like for instance i have shown here one arrangement of a five layer porous media for this one arrangement there are eight different possible front locations so that means we might have to have we might have the need to develop eight different one dimensional i mean eight different governing set of equations and so this becomes a tedious task so one five uh, five layer porous medium will have 60 such arrangements so one arrangement is having uh, eight different possibilities and there are 60 arrangements so this becomes very cumbersome so we went ahead and we generalized the one dimension and the one dimension model is able to predict the imbibition for irrespective of the arrangement irrespective of the contrast in the layer properties and irrespective of the number of layers so using this one dimension model uh, we wanted to see if this is still valid in uh, if this is this can be experimentally reproduced so here we show um, the experimental validation of this generalized model for a five layer system and just yes, the generalized model predicts very well and then we went ahead to analyze using a one dimension model uh, for 20 layers for 20 layers there are about 10 power 18 cases that are possible so out of that here i'm showing only six arrangements and out of this six arrangements um we see at one particular time which is 0.5 dimensionless time here we see that the front uh, is different in different arrangements i mean the front positions are different for different arrangements and also if we go to the at the break for the breakthrough time the breakthrough time are also different for each of these six arrangements uh, the details on breakthrough time can be found in this uh, publication and we see that the smallest of the pores may have the front uh, through which breakthrough occurs or one of the considerably large pores indicated by this uh, um, you know pink marker um, can may also have a front leading front which may cause the breakthrough so therefore the time of breakthrough and the layer of breakthrough are dependent again on the arrangement and the contrast in the layers properties so this is uh, another graph showing the grain size through which grain size of the layer through which the breakthrough occurs versus the breakthrough time 
and we see that for thousand arrangements, which is shown here, uh, the breakthrough time usually lies between 0 0.5 to 0 0.7. So it is different for different arrangements. And the grain diameter through which the breakthrough occurs uh, can vary from the smallest of the pores to considerably larger pores. So therefore, the multi-layered porous medium, both the breakthrough time and the breakthrough layer will strongly depend on the arrangements of the layers and the contrast in the layer properties. So in conclusions, we have that the front in the small pores always leads for a two-layer porous medium. For a three-layer porous medium, the small pores always does not have the leading front. And for a multi-layered porous medium, the contrast in the properties of the layers and the arrangement affect the leading front, the breakthrough layer, and the breakthrough time. So thank you for this opportunity and thank you for tuning in and I'll be very happy to answer questions if any. Thank you very much for the great talk. Um, certainly if you have any questions, please just type it into the chat. In the meantime, I have actually one. Have you ever considered looking into patchy porous media rather than layered one? Petri porous medium? Yes, so instead of having the layers um, sorted to have patches of different, um, okay. yeah. Uh, I have not looked into patch porous media, but I think if a fluid front, propagating fluid front um, reaches one particular patch, it will follow diffusive dynamics until that patch is covered. So okay. there are some studies on porous media which are not layered uh, in the direction of flow, but perpendicular to it. So I think it would be something like that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Very much. May I ask one question? Uh, uh, if, you, uh, if you have looked into wettability and roughness, it, it, it impacts a little bit of and of significant uh, Yes. Uh, here we have controlled the wettability by treating the glass beads um, before doing experiments by cleaning mm -hmm. them with acetone and bringing them to a particular pH so that most of the surface roughness is gone and because it is glass so we, uh, we have considered it to be smooth here and uh, that all the impurities on the glass are washed off during the cleaning procedure. Okay. So we have few questions in the chat. Um, here is one from Rayana Akbari. Do you see any effect from the capillary pressure or permeability contrast among the layers or mobility ratio? Yes, yes. Uh, the capillary pressure uh, is inversely proportional to the bead diameter. That is roughly we have taken from the literature studies. Uh, but otherwise, here, instead of using small pores, medium pores, or large pores, uh, in my publications, I've mostly used the term uh, capillary pressure and permeability because it would be complicated here. I have not <laughs> used this terms. But yes. Uh, with the change in grain sizes, the permeability changes, the capillary pressure changes, and uh, this one dimension model is applicable, very well applicable for mobility ratios of the order one mm -hmm. and zero. Yeah. So for high mobility ratios, I think the phenomena also changes. Here's another question from Abdul Rahman: Were all of this test two spontaneous inhibition? What would happen if the if you have an inlet pressure? Uh, yes, these tests or these experiments were for spontaneous inhibition. This is purely capillary driven flow. Uh, if there were an inlet pressure, maybe in the equations along with PC, we'll have an additional delta P. Uh, if it is a controlled inhibition, maybe minus delta P. So accordingly, the model would also change. But so far, we have not um, yeah. used it on uh, inhibition or forced inhibition or controlled inhibition. Mm -hmm. Another question. From Ariane, um, is the fluid arrangement also dependent on the layer thickness? Fluid arrangement, uh, if it is flu by fluid arrangement, if it meant the fluid front location, then it depends on layer thickness. But in all these experiments, we have considered uh, same thickness because the manual packing was really tough, so we considered the same thickness. But yes, layer thickness makes a difference. But the fluid fronts have not changed much until five layered systems, they have not changed. However, for multi layered systems, uh, I have not investigated it. And that's a wonderful place to start to investigate. Yeah, thank you. Okay, where is the last question from Zaid Yanda? 
Is it possible to relate this dual porosity permeability system in hydrocarbon reservoirs? Um, it is possible to relate. Uh, so this, I have performed this on a very small scale. So the scale up of this, uh, because this is the experimental setup is of the order of millimeters, uh, sorry, centimeters. So I think performing certain scaled up experiments uh, would be needed to answer this question. So it would be wonderful if they are relatable. Otherwise, I think there should be some corrections that should be, or additions or more investigations that needed to be made. Thank you. Sir. Okay. And let's thank the speaker again, um, both of them, for the great presentations from today. Um, our next session will be from Esosa Ekanem and Mohamed uh, Masoudi on polymer on, on visualization of viscoelastic polymer solutions in porous media using microfluidics and post scale modeling of nucleation and growth in porous media, um, a probabilistic approach. Um, further, I would like to can you go to the next slide, please. Yes, yeah. I would like to make you aware of our email address, postmediattt at gmail.com. If you have any questions, you can contact us there at any time. And also, if you want us to, to, to keep you informed about the next sessions, please just drop us an email and we will put you on the distribution list. With this, I would like to um, close the current session. Thank again all the speakers for the great presentations from today and all of you for joining uh, the discussion. And I'm looking forward to see you in two weeks.